This presentation looks at the types of inflation that can happen in an economy. We've already seen that rapid and accelerating inflation is uh, dangerous for many reasons. We'll now look at the ways in which inflation can creep into an economy. How can inflation arise in an economy? And we're going to look at three types of inflation. So to answer the question, why do prices increase, we can say that they increase for three basic reasons, and these are the three types of inflation. Firstly, there is demand-pull inflation. Then there is cost-push inflation. And finally, perhaps the most complicated and hardest to understand, is money supply inflation. Thankfully, it also happens to be the rarest type of inflation, and therefore the least important. Anyway, let's have a look, first of all, at demand-pull inflation. This type of inflation is a situation uh, happens when aggregate demand rises faster than aggregate supply. So AD is rising much more quickly than AS, than aggregate supply. Now aggregate demand is the combined desire to spend of everyone in the economy, the combined desire to consume. And everyone includes households, firms, governments, and foreigners. So the combined desire of these four sectors of the economy to spend or to consume gives rise to aggregate demand. Aggregate supply is the ability of the economy to produce goods. And therefore, when aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply, there is effectively a shortage of goods in the economy because sectors in the economy are trying to consume faster than the economy can actually produce goods and this leads to the prices of goods in the economy going up. This is what we call demand-pull inflation. By the way, it also leads to more imports, because if the economy is not producing enough goods to satisfy the desire of everyone in the economy to consume, then these demanders will then buy foreign goods, so imports will also go up in this situation. But the main effect is that aggregate demand being greater than aggregate supply, will pull up the prices of goods. And this is demand-pull inflation. Cost-push inflation occurs when there is an increase in the cost of factors of production, such as oil, which leads to an increase in the actual cost of production and means that goods are sold at higher prices because they cost more to produce. So cost-push inflation is very simple to understand. But more complicated and difficult is money supply inflation. The equation that we use to understand money supply inflation is MV equals PT. This is the quantity theory of money equation, or money supply inflation equation. So we have to look in detail as to what each of these terms means. M is the money supply. V is the velocity of circulation. P is the general price level. And T is the number of transactions. So let's look at each of these in turn. Imagine the amount of money in the economy is a hundred million pounds. Now V is the velocity with which the money is circulating in the economy. How fast is the money going round? Let's assume it's going round ten times a year. So this hundred million is going round ten times a year. Now when we multiply M by V we get a thousand million. In other words, a billion pounds. So on the right hand side of the equation we have one billion pounds. Now let's look at, sorry, on the left hand side of the equation we have one billion pounds. Let's look at the right hand side. The right hand side is P, which is the price level, and let's assume that everything costs on average a hundred pounds to buy. Now we know that on the left hand side we have one billion pounds. So for the equation to match or balance, the right hand side must also give us one billion pounds. But the right hand side is P times T. Now if the general price level is a hundred pounds, then we need to know how many transactions are happening in the economy. Now one billion is a thousand million. One billion is a thousand million. So, 
If the price level is 100 pounds, for us to get 1 billion on the right-hand side, we must have 10 million transactions going on in the economy every single year. So the equation says that the money supply multiplied by the velocity of circulation gives a number which is exactly the same as the price level multiplied by the number of transactions. And this makes sense because if we start off with a certain amount of money in the economy, the only reason it goes round is because we are buying and selling things. And so if we are buying and selling things 10 times a year with all our money, which is 100 million, we are making a billion pounds of transactions, which is a thousand million. And that thousand million can be expressed as the price level of most things, of everything, the average price level, multiplied by the number of transactions that are happening in the economy. So the number of transactions multiplied by the price level must equal the money supply multiplied by the velocity of circulation. Now, what does this tell us about the connection between money supply and inflation? Well, all we have to do is assume that the money supply increases, but that V and T stay constant. So if these two are constant and the money supply increases, then the result is that for an increase in the money supply, we get an increase in the price level. And this is called money supply inflation. So we assume that for various reasons, when the money supply goes up, suddenly, the price level will also increase, at least in the short run. Because nothing happens to V or T, they stay constant, and for the equation to work, an increase in M must be accompanied by an increase in P. So this is called money supply inflation. And so what we've seen is that there are actually three types of inflation that happen in the economy. One is called demand pull, and this is when aggregate demand runs ahead of aggregate supply in the economy. The other one is called cost push, and this is when the cost of a factor of production rises rapidly and causes the price of all goods made using that cost of production to rise. And the third type of inflation is money supply inflation, which says that when the money supply in the economy rises uncontrollably, it will be followed by a change or an increase in the price level, providing that V and T don't change at all. So these are the three types of inflation that we have to understand and deal with in the economy.